the, the last guy we got to talk about is JOK. Um, JOK, this is the most remarkable story. Because, like, the other guys, I mean, Denzel Ward's always been a good player. Dang. I know I said the same thing when Dang, I said. you don't boy, understand. Boy, I mean, at and You know, that's Emerson ridiculous. was good as soon as he came into the league. The Hop- Hopkins being as good as he is is a surprise, but he's a kicker, so we don't, you know, you can't get that worked up about it. David Njoku obviously is having his best season, but David Njoku <laughs> was at least a solid player, and now he's taking it up another level, well, two levels maybe. JOK, there were a couple games last year, he was inactive, a healthy scratch. Yeah. Think about that. He was bad. Man, he looked like he had no instincts. <laughs> the greatest it. linebacker in the last 30 years in the, for the Browns, Dequell Jackson, said to us, they should cut this guy. Is that that? I'm about to say, I we, think we, we got the clip. Got we got clip. that clip. Let's play that clip, guys. If I were that coach and what I watched on film, he's not a linebacker. He's definitely not a linebacker. He doesn't have wow. the fundamentals to play linebacker. It's just not – and. The places he was put in on on he was playing Sam at one position and I don't think he's the he's got the skill set he's got the the athletic ability but he doesn't have the discipline to play linebacker right now so I would look at I would look at playing him on third downs bring him in to guard tight ends let him be the man to man the cover linebacker with the title linebacker. Because I, I just don't think I think from that position, you gotta look at some of these free agents that are out here and bring a guy in that when a coach says these are the things we need to do to be successful, you actually have a guy leading by example doing those things. I think with when you look at this group, when you look at JOK, he did he, he he's not he doesn't play well with his hands. He gets lost in space. Uh, he doesn't he he plays too hesitant. And that's one of the things that Jim talked about on his presser. It's like you want guys to play fast. And when you play fast, that means you're prepared, you're comfortable with your your fundamentals, everything leading up to the diagnosis of a play. And I, I don't think JOK has that right now. If I were that. So, I mean, think about this. Like, Duquel, the, the man knows the position. He was a great player. He's a great guy. He didn't come on here week in and week out torching other players. No, he was. At all. Like, not at all. And he was like, this guy can't play. And for him to turn it around to go from being an unplayable player last year to maybe, and again, I, I it's hard to say because I'm not sure how many great linebackers there are in the AFC, but the fact that we're having a conversation about him being a pro bowler this is stunning compared to where he was last year. Well, I mean, it's, it's obvious what happened. There's one key thing that happened from this year and last He's year. He's juicing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. He changed his number from 28 to 6. Everybody <laughs> knew, <laughs> like, you can't play linebacker. But that 28 <laughs> was a nasty work. It was not. But, <laughs> yeah. I, but I tell you what really <laughs> happened, though. I'm a, I went back and looked at it a little bit, and I'm like, man, this dude is playing different. I watched uh, – I watched an interview where he talks about some of the different things he's doing, yeah. like with his body, like being able to be on the field. He's cut a lot of stuff out, for, out of his diet. He's a very, like, spiritual type dude. So he's really, you know, dedicated himself to doing certain things. But one thing that, that I don't think a lot of people understand is last April, um, and this kind of, it was crazy. It got swept under the rug a little bit. Um, JOK's brother died in a house fire. Um, and that was, this is on April 7th, 2022. So, um, you know, his, you know, his Joshua Emanuel Wusukormo was found dead in a home in Hampton, Virginia. And this report state that there was a fire at the house, but the Hampton police are opening a homicide investigation to his death. So, Jeez. you know, he lost his brother and, and not a lot of, it kind of was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Like, go. he was injured a lot. He was hurt. Then you lose your brother and, and tragically like that. That just goes to show you, for me, when, when DeQuell says he don't have the instincts, I just don't think he was all there. I don't think he was locked in like that. But, I mean, that 
that obviously that's a big part of it. But also, you got to look at what else this front office did. I mean, that D line was getting blowed up. Oh yeah, last oh, yeah. Year. oh yeah, oh yeah. So it's hard oh, yeah. to play oh, linebacker yeah. when you got your defensive tackles in your lap, which I kept saying last year. Yeah. Oh. Like you can't really tell because by the time you diagnose the play, you got to dodge your own dude and try to get past a guard. Right. So it, it was hard. Obviously, they fixed that this year. Having Jim Schwartz in there really simplified a lot of things. Like, bro, this, you yeah. see this? Go. And that man is, a, right. is like a trigger. He gone. And, and, you know, if you look at the tackles, and they, you guys put up the stats there. That's I mean, the tackles are really good. Now, he had his tackle numbers weren't bad last year when he played. I mean, he missed some time, and he still had 70 tackles through 15 games. But he made, last year, he didn't make any impact plays. I mean, I'm it, even shocked he had seven tackles for a loss because I felt like he never made a big game. You know two forced fumbles. Yeah, that's surprising. You know how <laughs> his numbers is down this year. Tackles <laughs> for losses. You know how that means. Look, watch this. This is impressive. Yeah. So he had three and a half sacks. Those sacks count as tackle for loss. So if you take those out of the equation, yeah. he still has 14 or 15 tackles for loss Double in the run game yeah. by itself. That's, that's crazy. And five pressures. Right. And still you have 84 tackles. So to me, um, some may argue, I argue that he's having a better year than Miles Garrett. <laughs> That's a bold take. I was so speechless. Who could say anything? <laughs> yeah, he was just, he was stuck here. Who could say nothing? Mannequin challenge. Now you are out of pocket. <laughs> he, was, he was trying to let's think. Let's not get crazy. He, he was trying to think, hold on, is he yeah. crazy? But yeah. bull, 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 he was, was waiting on the last. His analytical <laughs> joint was like, hold on, let me go. <laughs> Calculate, get up out of here. You know, obviously, Miles hasn't been quite as good the last couple of weeks. Although, Wait I thought he played a better game this yeah. week. Yeah. But Miles Garrett, I mean. That is. That's absurd to say. Yeah. What, what, what? Oh, his numbers? <laughs> his got, numbers he are. He got 18 TFL. His numbers is. Miles funny. Garrett has 13 sacks. I don't know what <laughs> but he's I get that. About. But you, you ain't going as a linebacker who's in yeah, coverage. Yeah, that's true. You not that for a linebacker in coverage to have 18 TFLs is ridiculous. Well, guess what? Guess what? He don't have you don't got to cover that long when you got a guy with you know, 13 sacks. You know, I don't think the sacks count <laughs> towards the tackles for loss. Really? I don't think so because that they must not. I'm not sure. They must not because here's why. Because look, put up Miles Garrett stats Cause, again. Because he wouldn't have a half a TFL. Well, right. no. I mean, two guys could. could you hit don't a get back half. You don't get half. I don't TFL. think that's just sex up though. There's no way he only has one running back tackle for a loss. That's <laughs> right. You might be right. So um, he has a second. Hey, if you include hey, the sacks, hey, he has 27 tackles. So you don't yeah. count. Sorry. Hey, apologize. Get the camera on him. Get the camera on him. Camera one. Camera three. Hey, listen, man. That was on your boy, man. You know what I'm saying? It's snowing outside. It's dark. Miles Garrett, I'm sorry, big dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at it like this, man. Like, listen, you hit me up. We gonna, yeah. we still can hang out and stuff like that, yeah. man. Maybe on, on another day. But, yeah, I, I didn't know you had 100 tackles for loss and 35 sacks. I got it. The <laughs> word on the street is that G has always been Miles Garrett's favorite sports talk guy in Cleveland, and I was number two. And yeah. I think we flip flop now. I have finally taken the top yes. spot. Yes, yeah, because I, you got crazy. I might got I got blocked. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> like because that didn't make no sense. I'm like, but I just saw Miles Garrett get a TFL last game. <laughs> yeah, right. Like on a running back, on a I was like, yeah, you're yeah. right. That's still impressive. That's impressive. No, listen, JOK's having a magnificent season. Yes, he is. And. He deserves all the credit, and maybe he's going to make a Pro Bowl. He's having, he's, he's, you know, been the second or third best player on the Browns' defense this year, mm -hmm. and none of us could have guessed that coming into the season. I mean, no way. Yeah. He's he's one of the reasons <laughs> they play that fast. I mean, when you see the Browns play at home, it's almost like they're they're playing at a different speed than the rest of these people. Like they fly around, and it's just spooky. I don't understand it. And he's one of those dudes that just flies around. He got the sack last week. And, and it's weird because I, I listened to uh, who was saying this. I think it's, it's uh, Chris, Chris Sims, Phil Sims' uh, kid. Yeah. Um, and he was saying, you know what I like about the Browns? He said, I love watching them. They're a guilty pleasure, pleasure because certain defensives will just give you something. They'll say, okay, we're going to give you that three in the flat. Yeah. We're just going to rally up. Yeah. The Cleveland Browns are like, no, we're not giving you three. We think we can get you for a three-yard loss. Every play. Yeah. And they go for it every play. And I, I have never seen that in my life, and he's right. I just want to know what his his preparation, his game preparation, JOK, has been 
It's been phenomenal. Like some of the plays, as you know, we do Coach Tyvis on Friday with McNuggets, mm -hmm. and some of the plays when we broke his film down, I looked at it. I'm just like, he. It's like he knew before the ball was even snapped what was going on. And it's like last year, I don't think he. Like I said, it was a lot going on. Like I said, when you got the D line in your lap, it's hard to do these type of things. But mm -hmm. this year, it's like it's no no hesitation or nothing. He knows and he shoots his shot. I mean, the way that, you know, like DeQuell, like I'm with DeQuell on this. As a linebacker, I think you got to play with your hands. I think you got to be able to use your hands to get off blocks. As I got older in my career, <laughs> four years into the league, I, I started playing <laughs> with my hands more because I realized like I'm my length is long, yeah. so I can boom and move people out the way. Well, with him, I don't, he, this kid's like 220. He brought around. Yeah, he like, like 220. Yeah. He be I, I weigh more than this guy right now. <laughs> right. And, and he be, he yeah. throw his shoulder in the guard. Yeah. He dip under these dudes. It's it's really remarkable. If you yeah. actually take the time to watch JOK over the course of a game, some of the stuff that he do is like freaky, man. The dude the dude is a quite the athlete. That's why he's making these plays. By the way, Steve Becker, our executive producer, is saying that a tackle for a loss, the sack does count as a tackle for a loss, but that doesn't make any sense. Uh, so hey, that's hands up my bad making the graphic, actually. Yeah. Because he has two half a sack, which would combine him for 14 sacks, 14 tackles for a loss. So that's on me for making the graphic. Or I have but that doesn't make any wrong. sense. How would he only have 14 tackles? How would he's he's hit running backs in the back? I just saw him hit a running back. Yeah, Hold that on. doesn't make any sense. Is, uh, I mean, if I'm counting everything from football reference correctly here, he yeah. does have 14 uh, tackles we'll have to, for a we'll loss. Have to so we'll have to look into this that. out. But let's 